made a fantastic life choice with the last stimulus check and got the new PodGo wireless pedal board. I'd like to tell you all about it. What is up, Yoshis? My name is Beth and I run Steadfast Descent. And I have been looking for a new pedal board for a little bit. Not because I don't like the Firehawk, but just because I know that there is good modeling amps out there. And as a worship musician, I keep hearing about the Helix. Yeah, you may have heard about it too. Uh, you may actually be looking into getting one, but uh, the price tag is a little uh, prohibitive. And the other reality that I face in particular is that I'm just a little extra when I play guitar live. Yes, yeah, so this footage was uh, very difficult to obtain and uh, it doesn't exactly show everything that like goes on, but I bounce around a lot. And so when I saw that the PodGo had a wireless option, I thought to myself, gee, I wonder if that works, because if it works, it would be so amazing. When it arrived, I was so hyped. I took it to my friend's house and I plugged it in and her house is big. And that's the important part of this thing because I am playing and I'm like, I cannot believe there's no latency on this. I cannot believe that this is so much fun. I am going literally as far as I can and the sound is not dropping out at all. Why doesn't everyone have one of these? And then I turned it off and we were hanging out and we were talking and chatting and making music and all sorts of good things. And when I turned it on again, I was standing right over the pedal board and my sound kept cutting out. And I, you know, having just bought this pedal board, was very crestfallen because what I thought was going to be the perfect solution for my bouncing madness was not exactly the perfect solution to my bouncing madness. I almost sent it back. So today, I'd like to share my honest opinion with you about this pedal board. I'm gonna rate it on a scale of one to 10 on all of the qualities that I was really looking for in a pedal board and then tell you whether or not I think you should get it based on how you play and so on and so forth. I'll also tell you how I resolved the wireless issues. So if you're having trouble with that, go ahead and skip ahead or stay tuned for the rest of the video. So the most important thing about modeling software is the sound it makes. Because as much as I would love to spend the thousands of dollars to get, you know, a vintage, real life, proper pedal board, I don't have that kind of space, I don't have that kind of money, and so I needed it to sound great. The PodGo uses Helix's sound library and Helix's sound generation system software. It has a couple of limitations in comparison with the Helix, but they all sound quite amazing. The second thing I did after testing the wireless capacity was hit the internet and look up for some presets that I could download. And it turns out that, tragically enough, a lot of the really good presets cost money for this. Worship Tutorials has a great free preset, and honestly, when I was scanning Line 6's community, there were a lot of great sounds that I started downloading and playing with no problem, and so I'm gonna give sounds 9 out of 10. I mean, it's not the real thing, but you're getting the very best, as far as I can tell, next thing. So then the next thing is the ease of building your own sounds, and I'm gonna give this a 7 out of 10. The PodGo Edit software is actually really intuitive and pretty simple to use. I was editing things really quickly, but it was not as intuitive for me to understand what changes each of the settings were making to my sound. When I started looking into it, I realized that there's a bit of a learning curve, which is why I dropped it from a 10 because of the ease of the software to a 7. But I'm very happy to report for all of us who are interested in recording our own music that recording is as easy as plugging in. 10 out of 10 on this one. I plugged it in and I opened Logic and then, you know, I just hop in and I'm looking for my audio input and it was right there. I didn't have to install anything else. Granted, this may have been because I already installed the PodGo Edit software to just like play with sounds, but it was completely seamless and I had no issues recording and the sound that comes from it, even wireless, is completely the same as the sound that comes in it out of speakers. I should have known this because it was a pod go board but the thing about recording this that is so fantastic for me you can record dry input and then reamp your signal i haven't been able to do that for a hot minute i only have to record my part once with my firehawk i'd be recording like 17 different parts over and over and over again because i was like ah you know what that sound wasn't actually the best and uh, if you can actually do that on the firehawk let me know but on this thing you have a dry input so while yes, you can record the modeled software, you can also just record what your guitar does and then you can reamp it as many times as you want to find out what sound is actually gonna be the best. Dude, recording, 10 out of 10. The next thing I was interested in is its physical quality. And the thing I love about it is it's a small board. It's not heavy. For what it does, I am so astonished that it takes up so little space. I was a little concerned at first 
moving from the Firehawk to a Pod Go that it would be too small. But playing, I haven't found any issues with size. Like, honestly, it's really convenient to have a smaller footprint on the stage, especially since I bounce around so much. It feels like a solid piece of work. It feels like it's gonna last me forever. I was really excited that the volume pedal actually felt like it was made of metal and that the rotating, I guess the axle, felt really solid and like it's not gonna have any issues. I was swelling away right off the bat. So now we gotta come to the uh, important part about this particular pedal board, which is the integrated wireless relay system. Now don't get me wrong, I would have been super stoked to have the wired version of this, but I specifically got this pedal board because of the integrated wireless feature. And first of all, it sends mad quality sound. Like, I know, maybe there's audiophiles out there who are like, ah yes, the $80,000 cable sounds way better than this trash piece of transmission. There may be some audiophiles out there who really can tell the difference between wired and wireless, but I, on the systems that I've run, which aren't trash systems and are quite nice systems, can't see any loss in audio fidelity through the wireless system. And one thing that I really like is that when I unplug the relay, there's no pop. It's like I'm making noise and then I'm not making noise because I'm holding it and when I pull it out I'm still not making noise because there is no pop. Pause. If this video is helping you out it helps me if you give it a like. So with that being said, as I mentioned though, the second time I booted up, you know, the rig and I'm standing there and I'm playing over it and it starts cutting out, <laughs> I was, I was, I was ready to send it back. I'm like, dude, okay, so why did it work the first time I plugged it in and now it's no longer working the second time I plugged it in? Well, in between plugging it in the first time and plugging it in the second time, I had downloaded the editing software and I had installed an upgrade. When I emailed Line 6, they had me reset the pedal board to factory settings. They had me uninstall and reinstall the software. And then I had read um, for this separate relay system, I believe it was the G10 or the G11 by Line 6, that oftentimes it needs to sync up to the room, basically, so that it isn't choosing a frequency that's already being used. And the way to do that, you take it out of the charger and you plug it into the relay and then it scans the room and whatever. And so when I started doing that practice, I'd pull it out of the battery pack, I'd plug it into my pedal board before I plugged it into my guitar. And between all of those things, I haven't had any issues with cutting out since. Now I'm making this review a month in because I was worried about a couple of different things when I got this pedal board. The first was if the wireless was even going to work, and the second was I had read some reviews about the G10 and the G11 systems that said that the receiver had a tendency after about a month to six months of use to get really loose and to just start falling out. I also was concerned because the way that the battery charging integrates with the pedal board it's kind of confusing. So normal, clean, hygienic battery practices is that you charge it all the way up and then you let it die. Or at least you get it really far down to zero and then it like has the full battery that it's charging. Because you know most lithium are rechargeable batteries, like they only have a certain number of cycles that they can recharge and so in order to get the most out of those recharge cycles, you just want to do it one and done. Now on a full battery charge it is purported that the relay transmitter should be able to play for seven hours. And that is plenty of time. On a Sunday morning when I'm playing, it's usually four hours at a time. So I mean, seven hours, like, it's actually pretty decent. But it takes a long time to charge all the way up. And there's only three battery indicators on the LED screen. So it's kind of hard to tell when you're actually getting a little risky towards the end of your battery's life. And obviously, for the most part, when I'm playing wirelessly, I am on stage and so I don't want it to die on me. So that is a little sketchy and a little whack, but like I said, I play for four hours at a time on Sunday and I haven't had any issues with it dying on me yet. This is only a month in. I do know that. And as far as it falling out, my plan is to just get a small adapter and then tie the relay onto my guitar strap. It'll still be attached if I jump around as I jump around. It shouldn't have any issues. I was also reading that there were particular guitars or input jacks that were exacerbating this issue, so I'm not super worried about that, although I will be updating this review if I do start having issues. All that aside, the range on this thing is superb. It advertises like, what, 12 to 20 feet? I was definitely cruising out in the back of the sanctuary and only towards the back of the sanctuary did I start cutting out and only at the very end of the range, which I would guess to be about 90 feet, was I starting to notice that, huh, yeah, there's a little bit of latency here. There is seriously no latency on this system. What you play is what you get. I didn't realize how much of a difference one cable would make. But cutting out the one cable for me on Sundays has actually still given me so much freedom. I'm still wired in because I don't have wireless in-ears. At the same time, I feel like I have so much freedom and there's 
one less cable that I'm tripping over, because I always used to trip over my cables in the middle of a service on a Sunday. For the price, I'm gonna give it a like 9.5 out of 10. Like really, for what you're getting, you're getting Helix software in a small package that you can record for just about $600. I mean, are you kidding me? That's amazing. The wireless system alone costs $120 retail. So I mean, in comparison with the wired one, it's not that great of a deal in the sense that you're really only getting $20 cut off of the thing, but you are getting a wireless relay system. So overall, I give this pedal board a nine out of 10. If you already enjoy your pedal setup, I don't know that you should sell it and get this one, but if you are looking to upgrade your pedal board setup or diminish its footprint size on your stage or looking for a reliable wireless system on top of all of that, this is the pedal board for you. As a worship musician, I would 100% recommend it to other worship musicians. And I have found sounds for every other genre I've played in without any issues. So honestly, it's a solid, solid buy. Whether you're recording, whether you're playing live, this pedal board may be the best purchase I have made musically ever. <laughs> so if you're still investigating this pedal board or if you've just gotten one and you're looking to learn more, feel free to subscribe because I'm planning on releasing a couple more videos about the specific pedal board, making the most out of it, learning how to use it, and so on and so forth. But since we're there, do you have one of these? Do you want one of these? What questions would you have about it before buying it? Or if you bought it and are having issues, what's happening? Let's see if we can figure it out. And if you've made it this far, I'd just like to thank you so very much for watching.